Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, in your hands we place this evening as we come together to learn your word. Father, we thank you for enlightening our mind, our hearts, uh, our, our hearts, and giving us a gift of understanding to understand your word. Lord, it, even after disciples walked with you for three years, Lord, they did not understand after you resurrected, but you opened their minds to understand the mystery of resurrection. Lord, today as we come, uh, we wanted you, Lord, to open our minds to understand your word that we may not only uh, believe, but also believe in your word and pass on this word with others and bringing more people to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jos. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so we are on, uh, we, we covered yesterday from verses 1 to 5. Five, yes. Right. Okay. We will start with the uh, six today, right? Yes, we will start with the six verses today. Uh, one to five was important. So there was a lot of... Uh, able to hear me, Jos? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, okay fine. Um, one to five was uh, um, very important because John was actually giving us what his entire idea was about, the new creation, most important. Yeah. And I was establishing, yes, as Jesus from the beginning. Yes. That's that's going to be a theme that is going to flow in the gospel of St. John, the new yeah. creation. Yeah. He wants to say, through Christ now, everything is becoming new. Right. Yes, everything is becoming new. And that's how he begins this. Okay? Right. Now we move on from verses 6 onwards. We study the part of John the Baptist now coming into the picture now. Okay. So John chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, we read now first. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. So my dear friends here, you know, very interestingly, John, the first five verses, he focuses on Jesus, the new creation, word, light, everything. Suddenly he goes now to John the Baptist now. So now because having uh, given the theme of his gospel or having given the idea of what he wants to speak. Now he goes back to maybe what he wants to hear. Maybe he wants to hear. He was going back to that. He's going to that now. Okay. With that idea, John writes about John, John the Baptist now. He says there was a man sent from God. It's a very strong statement here. That means John was actually um, a planned by God. Okay, let me give you a little bit of an understanding for this. When you read the Gospel of St. Luke, where it talks about the birth of John the Baptist, we hear Luke chapter 1, when you read that, maybe verses 3 or 4, can you read, Jose? Luke 1, 3 or 4. Jos, you're muted. Sorry, all this while I was saying, uh, you did not hear me praying also? No, no, prayer was heard. Once I started, I think you muted. <laughs> okay, okay. I was saying so many things. <laughs> okay, I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I was, okay. So, uh, verse 3, right? Um, 3 or 4, I'm not sure. Just read that. It seemed good to me also. Okay, then we go to four, Joseph. Yeah, to four. That, that you may know the truth concerning the things of which you have been informed. Okay, let's move further. In the days of uh, Herod, king of Judea, there was uh, a priest named Zechariah uh, of the division of Abia, Abijah, and he had his wife. He had a wife of daughters of Aaron, mm -hmm. and her name was Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And they were both righteous before God. Mm. walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Mm. Be but they had no child. Okay, that's enough, Jose. Yeah. I think that is verses 5, 6, no? 5, 6, yeah. Okay, 5, 6, okay. Now, what I want to tell you here is, look, Zechariah and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist, the Bible says, both of them were righteous, 
both of them walked in the ways of god hmm. and both of them were a priestly family okay hmm. Hmm. everything about them is good yeah but still they did not have a child correct it seems a little challenging to hear that mm-hmm. you know we say on one hand the bible says children are a blessing of god mm. and we find no reason why these two couples mm. when everything is right should not be blessed yeah okay. but then the bigger picture is as we know god has already preplanned everything mm. so god already planned mm. the purpose of john the baptist Mm. that he is going to be the forerunner for jesus christ right yeah okay. therefore john has to be born only a few months or so a little earlier than jesus christ yes that is the reason and elizabeth and zachariah since they were righteous since they are priestly family since they walked in the way of god god is blessing them with a son who will be the forerunner of jesus christ Hmm. therefore the delay the pain might have been difficult for them hmm. but then there is a greater joy waiting for them yeah the end end joy yes yes that's what the bible says no you will in john 16 20 you will mourn you will weep yeah but the mourning will turn into a joy 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 and that's why sometimes we may think why our prayers are not answered yeah. my dear friends if our prayers are righteous and genuine and the delay that means god is preparing us for something better mm. better okay so that's why it says the man sent from god so a clear purpose is given for john the baptist he has a mission yeah all of us have a mission that's true yeah but here for john a very clear mission which will be known to everyone is given yeah for example jos even if you are born you have a mission correct but everybody may not know your mission correct but here is a john the baptist since he is a part of the salvic way of god his mission is a public mission hmm. so it's planned by god yeah. that's what we read in luke and you okay when you go to luke's gospel 163 and 64 we know <clears throat> after john the baptist is born zachariah is naming him john Uh-huh. and he writes this uh, beautiful uh, canticle canticle of zachariah it's called okay now look at this we know when john the baptist uh, angel gave an announced to zachariah mm. he had a little doubt he had a little doubt okay because of that he was muted he could not speak he mm. could not speak well we may wonder is it too harsh a punishment okay uh, that's a little um, deeper story let's not go there now after the birth of john the baptist they want to name john john mm. the baptist they don't know so they're asking the mother what shall we name him she saying john and everyone is saying there's nobody in your family called john john yeah why are you calling him john anyway they knew that zachariah cannot speak so they send him a tablet to write the name right. that's what we read in luke 163 and 64 yeah he asked for a writing tablet and wrote his name is john all of them amazed immediately his mouth was open and his tongue freed and he began to sing the canticle what is that let's listen to that yeah. okay let's listen to that in verse 67 he says then his father zachariah was filled with the holy spirit and spoke this prophecy look at this mm-hmm. prophecy as i told you is always the gift of the holy spirit yeah. he's speaking what god wants him to speak now right what did he say uh, it's a lot of things he said but let's read only 76 and 79 and you child will be called the prophet of the most high for you will be you will go before the lord to prepare his way to give knowledge of salvation to people by the forgiveness of their sins by the tender mercies of your god drawn from my okay um okay somebody is break upon to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace so a prophecy god is speaking his word through zachariah mm. nobody knows who who the lord is mm. but they all knew god speaks that uh, john the baptist will go before preparing the way of the lord that's why john says a man sent from god sent from god mm. okay 
Now we move further into the Gospel of John itself. Okay. John chapter 1 verse 9 to 11 we read. Hmm. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. Hmm. He was in the world and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. You know, um, here's something, of course, the light, all this we already saw in the first five verses. Okay. Yeah. Now, John very interestingly says, he was in the world. That means God was in the world. Mm. That means his presence is already there. But people were not aware of his presence. In many ways, God's presence was there in the Old Testament too. Especially among the Jewish people. But many a time, people did not recognize the presence of God. They did not recognize the voice of God. And once again, John is very clearly mentioning here. The world came into being through him. So here, uh, here is John referring to the, uh, you know, the years of Jesus where he was not known uh, or is it uh, is he talking no, no, he's talking about the eternal things eternal eternal oh. eternal things he's not referring to the infancy of uh, childhood of jesus christ hmm. he was talking about the entire thing hmm. of course it continues till the 30 years of jesus christ okay okay it continues till then hmm. for us that part is more important okay it's just you know john is just making us aware hmm. that god is there since people were in darkness, he is bringing a new light into. That's what he's trying to say here. Yeah. Now, verse 12 to 13. But all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Hmm. Who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of men, but of God. Now here, something very important John says here. He's talking about two kinds of birth here, right away. He says, to all who receive him, he believe in his name. Mm. He gave power to become children of God. A mm. power to become children of God. Mm. And he says, who are not born of blood or of the will of the flesh or will of man. That means, he says, this is not according to the human uh, natural birth, mm. but of God. So here again, John is mentioning about two kinds of life here. Mm. A life in the flesh, the natural life. And the life in the spirit, a new life, which is a gift of God, which is to the power of God. What is that power? That power is the Holy Spirit and the sacraments. Mm. Sacraments. It is through the sacraments we receive grace to become children of God. Mm. It is through the Holy Spirit that we are created into a new being. being. Mm. So that is the power that he's talking here. And that's exactly what we see later about the power of the Holy Spirit there. So he's already talking about a sacramental birth here mm. through the spirit and through that power. Though he does not talk directly about it. So John is giving, that's what, you no know, word till verses 18 is called as the prologue. Okay. Mm. An introduction to all these things. Yeah. And then John will go little by little into the deeper truths now. Mm. Deeper truths now. You know, he gave us the identity back. The main thing here is theme here in verses 12 and 13 is John is telling us that God is giving us identity back. Hmm. In the Garden of Eden, Adam had an identity. Hmm. He was in the image and likeness of God. Hmm. He was the replica of God hmm. or the mirror image of God. Hmm. Now, John says, through Jesus, that identity is going to come back to every one of us yeah. as a child of God. Hmm. Yeah, as I said, human outer flesh, body is always there. Hmm. He's talking about the inner self, the spirit which will be once again given to us as a new birth. Mm. Remember in Genesis, we saw God breathed into the nostrils of man. Man became a living being. Mm. Before that, there was a man who was made of clay. The outer nature was there. But the inner nature was breathed into him. And when Adam ate from that tree, this inner nature, spirit of God was dead. Mm. And now he says, coming back, coming back, born of that spirit once again, mm. a new life. Again, is bringing the same theme of new life back here, John. Hmm. Okay, in the Greek, power means charis. That's what charism comes from. Charism comes from the word, Greek word called charis. Yeah. To be born of the spirit, power from above. What does it mean? Romans, Paul says that. To be born of spirit, power from above means. Paul says in Romans 8.14. 
for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Therefore, when we say born of the Spirit, a power from above, it is being totally under the control of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Spirit that man received, Adam received as a breath of life, mm -hmm. which he lost and he became a spiritual dead being, is now being revived. And that leading us is what we are children of God. So nobody can be a child of God until the spirit of God takes control mm. of the outer nature. It is the inner nature mm. that becomes the child of God. Mm. That's what he says, not born of flesh and blood. Something very important there. Okay, this is all very uh, important things, but uh, obvious things. 14 to 16. And the word became flesh and lived amongst us. And we have seen his glory. The glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Mm. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. Yeah. Now, Joe, yeah. that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Can you go a little slow? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I can't do that. I'm just reading that word now. Okay. Yeah. I'm not explaining this. From his fullness, we all received grace upon grace. Now, we know about the word. Word was from the beginning Correct. that we had there. Now, this word is you know, incarnate, becoming flesh. Mm. And that is something that all of us can see. Mm. Because uh, you will read in the next verse, nobody has ever seen God. Mm. Nobody can see God with our human eyes. Mm. But when that word, which is God, becomes flesh, mm. that's why John says, we have seen his glory. His glory. That means in the fullness of his grace, we can see that. And John says, this was he whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. Mm -hmm. A very strong statement here. Joe, this answers your early question. You ask me, is John talking about the hidden life of Jesus Christ or the eternal things? Okay. If John is talking about only the 30 years of Jesus Christ, he cannot mention that Jesus was before John the Baptist. Yeah, yeah. He says, he was before me. Mm. That means very clear, it is not about the 30 years of Jesus' life, mm. but it is about the eternal truth of the word, which was always there. Yeah, in fact, uh, this verse 133 also, John says that uh, the one who uh, sent me told me that the spirit will come upon the person you whom you baptize. Who sent him? Who, yeah, 133. I know that, I'm coming to that, but who yeah, sent so, him, I said, who sent him? Yeah, who sent him? Uh, so, why, that is what I'm asking. So, so, which means John had a con has been having conversation with uh, God the Father or God the Son? Uh, I'll tell you that when I come there. Okay. Very, I've made a note of it also. Okay. 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 Because that's a very important question. Because uh, why I'm telling you is because, see, he does not know Jesus Christ. Correct. Okay? Even though he's his own relative. Yeah, cousin. He does not know that Jesus is the, uh, the yeah, one yeah. whom he's proclaiming. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Therefore, Jesus has not come and told him anything. Hmm. He says, I don't know him. Mm. But then he says, the one who sent me told me this. Mm. Okay. There's a little mystery there. Yeah. I'll clarify when I come there. Okay, okay, fine. But now this is what we see here very clearly. Yeah. yeah. John is giving just the description. Okay. Yeah. There is nothing much to have from here till yeah. verses 18, as I said, because it's only a prologue. Yeah. So John is giving the detail of the new birth, word, flesh, all these things. Clear about it? Yes. Okay, then. 17 and 18, yeah. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. What is this, Jose? There's something very important here. The law was given through Moses. Grace huh. and truth came through Jesus Christ. Okay. Any Anything you get here? No, I'm not. Okay, I, I will tell you what uh, the best revelation I got here. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Now... Today, there are many people, I'm talking about the Christians, mm. who proclaim, mm. uh, and not Catholics, of course, that it is not necessary to keep the law. Faith in God is enough. Mm. 
grace is god enough because paul said you know you're not saved through the you know law but through faith and grace right they are confused there hmm. but what we need to understand is the pharisees or the jews try to live according to the law hmm. okay hmm. which is very important yeah but they found out that the more they tried to live according to the law the more they ended up breaking the law hmm so it became a big problem for them hmm in fact that's what is one of the biggest issues there hmm there's so many laws why you know why because what they thought was since they knew sin is breaking the law of god hmm and the jews were constantly going to exile one after the other one after the other hmm so all these learned jews they thought all this is because we are sinning sinning so mm. they try to make more and more tough laws so that they won't sin mm. that's why they became so much of laws mm. in fact jesus says you try to keep the law of man very important okay so that is what it is but then what john says here is yes law was given by moses but in order to follow that law you need the grace of god mm. you understand that and paul says also he never said you have to break the law because jesus himself said in matthew 5:17 i did not came to can you read that jose matthew 5:17 matthew 5:17 uh think not that i have come to abolish the law and the prophets Hmm. i have come not to abolish them but to fulfill them yes very clearly jesus himself says we cannot break the law no. yeah so what is all this confusion about what paul was saying is he never said that you have to break the law he said as far as you try to follow the law you will never be successful hmm. but there therefore ask for the grace of god hmm. when god gives you the grace automatically you will follow the law hmm. and that's why here john is saying law came through moses but the grace to follow that law came through jesus christ so till then till jesus uh, came in hmm. the grace was not given grace was not there a grace in the sense that extraordinary grace to follow the law was not there uh. the grace to know the law was there only for the jews okay now grace is given to everyone mm. why i will tell you jose i will explain this also to you today for everything and anything you cannot refer to the law mm. but what happened in uh, jeremiah 31 31 i think we read this earlier can you read mm. that once again jeremiah 31 31 jeremiah, i will explain this to you yeah jeremiah 31 31 31 onwards you read 31 31 onwards uh behold the days are coming says the lord when i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and the house of juda hmm. not like the covenant that I, which i made with their fathers when i took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of egypt hmm. my covenant which they broke though i was their husband says the lord hmm. but this is the covenant which i will make with the house of israel after those days says the lord Mm. i'll put my law within them i will write it upon their hearts ah oh. i will be their god and they shall be my people ah oh, that you continue please continue and no longer shall each man teach his neighbor and each each his brother saying know the lord for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest says oh, the lord that's enough look at this he says mm. the law will be in their heart mm. okay Hmm. nobody has to teach anyone hmm. be there now jose how can i write the law in your heart hmm. law is there law is not changing okay yeah law means the commandments of god not the laws that the jews made okay they talk about the law of god now he says he will write it in your heart jose hmm. how is god going to write it in your heart with the power surgery? of god with the open power the open heart surgery open it <laughs> with the power of the holy spirit okay so you know 
Only the Holy Spirit can put it in your heart. Yes? Right. Now, on the cross, what happened there? One of the soldiers pierced the side of Jesus Christ. Yes? Correct. Immediately water and blood came out. Yeah. The sign of the new covenant. Yes? Yes. The spirit was flowing there. Yes? Yeah. Now, the person who pierced the side, Longinus, hmm. what did he say now? He was, a, he was truly the son of God. Yeah, Joseph, I don't understand this. Just one minute before, yeah. this fellow was going and poking Jesus. Yeah. Next moment he says, he was truly the son of God. Mm. Why? His eyes are open. Uh, is it because of that? He was given the understanding. Now, uh. when the water came out, uh. what is it symbolizing now? The Holy Spirit, yeah. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes, what will happen, Joes? The law will be written in the heart. Mm. Yes? Yeah. And Jesus says, nobody has to teach you. You will know. Mm. Correct? Yeah. The moment that Spirit came, he understood that this person is Son of God. Mm. Nobody taught him. Right. Now, is it by learning the law of a grace he received it? By the grace. That's what John says here. Okay. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Okay. What so, is verse 16, uh, Raghu? Oh, just one verse uh, above, uh, below before this. 16. Uh, from his fullness, we all receive grace upon grace. So what does that mean? From his that's what, from him, we are receiving grace. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. So John is talking about all that's going to happen. Uh -huh. Since it's a prologue, he's just summarizing the entire event. Okay. okay. So grace upon grace. Remember, even in... Uh, Matthew chapter 5 verses uh, 30, I think, where sin abounded, grace also, sorry, Romans, sorry, Romans, Romans 5, 30, yeah? I think so. Uh, grace ab Sin abounded, grace also multiplied. What is that? Well, let me say, Romans, Romans 5. chapter 5, 30, I think. 30, 35, I think. Just no, no, 5, it is not that. 5, it's only... No, chapter 5, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Verses 20. Uh, Romans 5. Ah, yes, verses 20. Correct, correct, yeah. This is 5.20. Read that. Uh, law, came into, law came in to increase the trespass. Mm -hmm. But where sin is increased, sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Look at this. Paul, Paul says that law was there, sin increased because people trying to go in breaking and breaking and breaking. Mm -hmm. But when sin increased, what came? Grace was given more. Okay? Mm. Where sin increased, grace abounded. So it is through the grace that we, that's what John says here, from mm. grace upon grace we receive. Mm. Okay. Mm. So he says the entire thing mm. is not because of anything that we do. Mm. It's simply because of the grace of God. That's what Paul and John is mentioning here. Mm. It's only a summary of everything. Mm. It's not a particular incident that we talk about. That, that is also, I think John also mentioned this when he talks about uh, when he talks about people going to him to get baptized, right? And ah, that, that, mean, yes. that is also the grace he's talking about. Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. Everything. No? Whatever we receive from God is a grace. Mm. Grace. That's what it is. Now, verses 18. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. That is, John says, he is the image of the invisible God. Mm. Nobody can see God, but through Jesus Christ, Later, you will find that Philip is asking, show us the father. Father. He says, I and the father are one. one. Mm. That's what Paul also says in Colossians 1.15. Mm. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creations. Mm. Here, Paul also talks about the new creation. Mm. So, we know God was from the beginning, but Jesus in the flesh was not the firstborn no, in the world. No, he is not. But then he, Paul says, he is the image of the invisible God, which is okay. Mm. He is the firstborn of all creation. What is that? It is, it is in, the, in the spirit, the new creation is talking about. Yes, the first one to rise and go. Uh. And we all are united to that resurrection of Christ, a new creation. So, in, so in the second coming also, mm. uh, Jesus' uh, manhood no? mm. will, uh, will be there or... Uh, how no, I don't, the manhood of Jesus will not be there because he is only a judge then. He is not going to be incarnate again. No, not incarnate, but then uh, the, uh, you know, like, uh, see, we all, we are all ma men, right? 
Uh, we, when we die, become we become. Okay. Can we see uh, him? That's what you're saying, no? No, no. We become the spirit. Yes. We become, the, we become spirit, right? Mm. Now, but still, if, from where did we come in? We came in from man to spirit. Okay, so that's what you're asking me. How yeah, will he yeah. uh, come in? See, there's only one evidence for that, Jose. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you go to Acts chapter 1 verses uh, 9, 10, so 10 or something? Acts 1, 10. 9 onwards you read. Acts 1, 9 onwards. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. Okay, now we'll stop here for a moment. Yeah. As the apostles were looking, uh, he was lifted up in the They could see him, okay? Though yeah. in the glorified form. Yeah. He was not in the same nature. He had a body, but it was a glorified body, okay? Yeah. Now read the next verse, Jose. Read the next and verse. While they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes. Oh, that's the angels, okay? okay. Yeah. Said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus whom who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Okay, that is the evidence. Yeah. You get it? He's, they say he will come in the same way. Mm. Okay. So probably he'll come with the same glorified body. Yeah, and also Jesus also mentions, I think in I don't know which verse it says, I call you friends. John chapter 15 verses 15. So this this uh, mention is he would, uh, did he mean only the people around him during this time earthly life or he also meant uh, even to the future generation. Okay, can you read that Jose? There's some very important message there. Uh, what is John that? 15, 12 onwards you read. John 15, 12 onwards. John 15, 12. This is my John. This is my command. Ah, okay. You Thank you. Thank you. That you love one another as I have loved you. Ah. Greater love has no man than this, that a mm. man lay down his life for his friends. Ah. You are my friends if you do what I command. Okay, that's enough. Now he says, mm. he's explaining what is friendship. He says, Correct. friendship is laying down the life for the other. Okay. Correct. A friend will lay down the life for the other. Okay. Yeah. Now, Joe, has Jesus laid down his life for you? Yes. Has he laid down for Peter and John? Yes. The apostle? Yes. Did he lay down for Paul? Yes. Did he lay down for me? Yes. For all of us, he's laid down? Yes. And he says, a person will lay down his life for his friend. Yes. Now, tell me who is his friend? We are all. Experts. All of us. Yeah. You got an answer there? Yes. It's not only that circle. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Expression so, of sacrificial love, that's all. Yeah. So so I, I understand. So I am saying this is that. So uh, many a times we consider God as someone who, or rather we are not able to relate God the way he was living in this world as human. Mm. Mm. Right. Uh, that is uh, one gap, I think, in uh, which is in our faith also, isn't it? That's true. That is why, you know, Jesus told Thomas in John chapter 20, you know, uh -huh. blessed are the one who do not see and yet believe. Yet believe. So yes. without seeing, I know that that physical mm. connect is not there. Mm. In spite of that, when we believe, the blessing is more. Jesus himself said that. Yeah. So, but that connect also give, uh, I mean, a lot of people who are able to connect also, I've seen. I've heard, I have seen people, you know, talking in that terms as well. I think that is also very important as much as, uh, you know, for example, when the, the troubles that we go through, he, uh, God is not a God who does not understand the troubles that we go through because he has gone through or other, uh, you know. That's what the letter to Hebrew says that. Hmm. He has suffered in everything like you and me, except in sin. Hmm. Yeah, so that's, so that's true. That is true. Yeah. What I'm saying is that we have to develop that connect. Correct, that's correct. our responsibility yeah. yes. through all these exercises of prayer, word, sacraments. Hmm. That is the connect we develop. Hmm. That connect okay. we develop. Right. Yeah. Yes, let's move on then. There we know. Okay. Now, John chapter 1 was 19 to 22. Okay, very interesting here. Hmm. This is the testimony given by John 
when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? You know, John, people were just flooding to John the Baptist. Okay. Now, when we say John, John here, it is not John the gospel writer. It is John the Baptist. Okay. All of you keep that in mind. People may get confused now. Hmm. John's gospel, John. No, no, we are at this point of time, we are talking about John the Baptist. Baptist. So, um, so John, the Baptist is giving a testimony. What happened? So many people were going to John for baptism. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Now that became a big commotion. Hmm. And if somebody talks something against John, a crowd was ready to fight for him. Hmm. So the lawmakers and all were a little scared of him. Hmm. Scared of him also. Yeah. Also, his words were very tough and rough also. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, but they wanted an answer. What is happening? Who is this fellow? Okay. Uh, so, they are sending people to him. Who are you? Uh, he confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. Mm. Okay. So because John was baptizing everyone. Mm. Now, the Jewish people know when the Messiah comes, he will baptize. I'll come to that a little later. Okay. They knew the law. Mm. So they ask him, are you the Messiah? Mm. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? Mm. He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Mm. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. Mm. What do you say about yourself? My dear friends, you are very interesting. Mm. They're asking him, are you the Messiah? Mm. Okay. Or rather, they did not ask that. Simply, he said, I am not the Messiah. The next question is, are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Mm. Why did they ask this question? Are you Elijah? They Wait. could have asked, no. Yeah. Are you Elisha? Yeah. Why they ask, are you Elijah? Because then, it's understand Elijah will come. Are you the prophet? Mm. Who's this prophet? Who's this Elijah? No, Elijah is supposed to come before. Oh, okay, Elijah is supposed to come. Yeah. Are you the prophet? Wow. Oh. Ah, that's something very interesting here. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we are going to learn now. Okay. Yeah. Let's stick with Elijah first. Elijah first. Yeah. We will cover that. John 1, 23, 24. He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. Mm. As the prophet Isaiah said, mm. now they had been sent from the Pharisees. So he's replying to them. Okay. Mm. Mm. He's not saying he's Elijah. Mm. He's not saying he's um, the prophet. Mm. But he says, I am not the Messiah. But he says, I am the voice of the one crying out. What is this? He says, as the prophet Isaiah said, Isaiah had prophesied many years back that there will be a voice in the wilderness. Let's read that, Isaiah 43. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Mm. So, John is saying, I am that voice which Isaiah prophesied. Mm. The voice in the wilderness crying out, prepare the way of the Lord. Mm. In a sense, what is he doing, Joe? Mm. In a sense, he is already declaring his mission, what his mission is. Okay. So how so, did how did he know that? How did John? That, I can't, that will come when we come to 33. Okay, okay don't worry about that. Okay, okay. 33 is still there. Don't worry. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Now okay. I'm just telling you this voice is the one. Uh. Malachi also prophesied about it, Prophet Malachi. Uh, Malachi 3 1, we read, See, uh, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. Uh, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord. So Malachi is also prophesying like Isaiah. Okay. Uh, uh, but Malachi goes on to say something more uh, in chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. No, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and terrible day mm. of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of parents to their children and the hearts of children to parents so that I will not come and strike the land with a curse. So he says, first he says a voice, okay, a messenger to prepare the way. Now second, Malachi is clearly mentioning the name Elijah there, okay, mm. to change the heart of people. Mm. Now, when you go to Luke chapter 1, when Angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah, mm. what did Angel Gabriel tell? Mm. Let's read that verse 16 and 17. He will turn many of the people to Israel to Lord their God. Mm. The spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children 
and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous mm. to make ready a people prepared for the lord so angel gabriel said he will go ahead of the lord with the spirit of elijah okay mm -hmm. isaiah says a voice will be heard prepare the way of the lord mm. malachi says a messenger will come before preparing the way mm. then he adds with the spirit of elijah he will go before them mm. now angel gabriel is declaring to zachariah before the birth of john the baptist that he will go ahead prepare the hearts of people with the spirit of elijah mm. okay so they know elijah has to come before the lord okay mm. that's why they're asking are you elijah mm. are you elijah john said no i'm not mm. he did not say he's elijah mm. but jesus said yes he is elijah yeah did jesus say that yes yes in matthew chapter 11 verse 13 and 14 elijah is on the for all the prophets in the law prophesied until john came and if you are willing to accept it he is elijah who is to come so jesus is declaring that john the baptist is elijah who comes before me to prepare the way mm. and the jewish people know that before the messiah comes elijah has to come you understand that yeah that's why they asking him are you elijah even though john did not confess it mm. prophecies talk about it mm. angel declared it mm. jesus confirmed it mm. john the baptist is that elijah who is to come mm. remember i told you in the passover narration they will go out and see if elijah has come mm. yeah yeah passover cannot be completed without elijah coming yeah jesus completed the passover Hmm. that means elijah had already come. come and that was john the baptist hmm. clear about it yes clear about it yeah there are going to be two witnesses final two witnesses the church calls it okay hmm. the new elijah john the baptist and the new moses jesus hmm. church is talking about the bible also tells about the final two witnesses the final two witnesses are the new elijah john the baptist why why elijah why why uh, that's john the choice of god that's the choice of god choice of god okay yeah that's what we don't know why elijah but john to oh. god chose him oh. it was generally oh. generally elijah is called the greatest of prophets oh. what reason i don't know it was elijah who was taken by yes, the taken up, yes yes taken up and it was elijah and moses who came to the mount uh, yes Tabo. that's the reason for that two final witnesses ah okay i remember i told you somebody i think jude asked me about uh, the transfiguration correct that i had told the final two witnesses mm -hmm. i told him i will cover this there okay now revelations 11 3 and 4 says like this let's read that and i will grant my two witnesses authority to prophesy for 1260 days where exactly these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the lord on the of the earth mm. fine jos mm. let's hold on for a moment here yes i know it's a little tough here but i want to be clear here okay mm. i will grant my two witnesses mm. 1260 days wearing sackcloth mm. these are the two olive trees and the two lamps that stand before the lamb on the lord on the earth of the earth okay 1260 days is equal to 3 and a half years mm. the length of the ministry of john yeah, and yeah, jesus go 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 it is slow uh, you yes. are a little fast <clears throat> okay 1260 years is 3 and a half years mm. calculated the length of the ministry of john and jesus mm. remember john was born 6 months before jesus christ correct he died about 6 months before jesus christ mm. so these two witnesses mm. the new elijah and the new moses mm. are the one who are going to testify for 3 and a half years right clear 
Right, right. Who wore a sackcloth in the Bible? John. Second book of Kings, chapter 1, verse 8. They answered him, a hairy man with a leather belt around his waist. He is, it is Elijah the Tishbite. So he was also like a sackcloth with a belt around his thing. Mm. Matthew 3, 4 says, Now John wore a cloth of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locked and wild honey. Don't you see the similarities there? Right. Do you see that clearly? Yes. You get it? Yeah. Then, Jezebel wanted the head of Elijah mm. because he was prophesying against Aha yeah. for following evil ways. Yes? Yes. And she had, you know, what happened? She could not get his head. Mm. Another Jezebel named Herodias mm. wanted the head of John. Mm. She succeeded. Yeah? Yes. Are you clear now? Yes. Everything connecting between John and Elijah. Yeah. Now I said John is the final witness, one of the final witnesses. Yes? Mm. On the mount, you have Elijah standing there. Mm. Indicating the final witness has come. John is beheaded, so John could not be there. Mm. Okay? Now we have time for the new Moses. A little bit I'll tell you. New Moses. How is Jesus a new Moses? Why did they ask, are you the prophet? Just why did they ask, are you the prophet? Elijah is clear now? Yes, yes. Why did they ask, are you the prophet? Uh, yeah. Why, why? They did not ask, are you a, a prophet? Hmm. They asked, are you the prophet? So they're talking about, uh, they're referring that uh, a prophet would come in. Deuteronomy 18, 15. Hmm. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from hmm. among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. Hmm. So Moses is telling the people on that day, hmm. another prophet like me will come. Hmm. So they know before the Messiah comes, a prophet like Moses has to come. Hmm. For them, the prophet Moses. That's why they ask him, are you the prophet whom Moses pointed out? So whatever certain done, even though they knew the law very well, no? they, yes. they had a very clear understanding of uh, what it was written in the law. Absolutely. They knew everything. Mm. But the problem is they could not accept Jesus in that way. They wanted a king. Mm. That's a problem. Uh, yeah. They could not accept it. In fact, too much knowledge was also difficult for them. Correct, correct. Yeah. No, but I was just thinking the kind of uh, questions they ask. Uh, they were all always looking at the law. I do not know whether we have any, we have people like that today, you know. Look. Oh, see, the Jews were exceptionally good at it. Mm. And they made sure it was passed on to the generation. Generation, correct, correct. That is very... They made it because Deuteronomy 6, the Shia prayer, they call it, Deuteronomy 6, 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. One God yeah. They used to say that three times in a day. Mm. And for them, the Torah, I was talking about Torah, the five right. books. Right. It was God for them. Mm. They knew everything about it. Mm. For them, the law and the prophets are the most important thing. Mm. They believe the law. They believe the prophets. Mm. That's why on the Mount of Transfiguration, you have one prophet and one law. Moses representing the law. Yeah. Elijah representing the prophets. prophets. Mm. And the two witnesses, Jesus says, another Elijah will come. Another Moses will come. Yeah. Another Elijah is John the Baptist. The new Moses is Jesus himself. Jesus, himself, yeah. Jesus the new Moses. Mm. First Moses born, Pharaoh killed all the male children. Yes? Yes. When Jesus was born, Herod, Herod, Herod the Great had all the male children killed. Mm. Moses was drawn out of water. The word meaning Moses means drawn out of water. Yeah. Jesus on the baptism comes out of water. Yeah. And that's when he's declared the son of God. Yeah? He was, Moses was chosen to lead the people into the promised land. Mm. New Moses, Jesus, leading us into eternal life. Eternal life. Land. For 40 years in the wilderness before beginning ministry, Moses, okay? 
Hmm. From age 40 to 80, 40 years he was in the wilderness before he began his mission. Hmm. Jesus on the mountain for 40 days before he begins his mission. Hmm. At the beginning of the mission, Moses turned water into blood. Hmm. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus turns water into wine, symbolizing blood. Yeah. You understand that? Yes. Before entering on journey to promised land, Moses celebrated the Passover. Jesus, before entering into heaven, he offered the final Passover. Yeah. yeah. Moses led people into baptism through Red Sea, a symbol of baptism. That's what the church teaches us. Jesus leading us into baptism. Fasted for 40 days, Moses. Jesus fasted for 40 days. Yeah. Remember, the other person to fast for 40 days was Elijah. Law read from the mountain by Moses. Mm. Jesus, the new law, the Beatitudes, mm. which was not against the law, explaining the law clearly. It was given from the mountain. Right. Moses appointed 70 people. Mm. Jesus appointing 70 people in Luke chapter 10. Mm. Yeah. Both Elijah and Moses appeared on Mount Tabor. Right. Jesus, the new Moses. Oh. Am I clear? Yes. That's what they asked the question. Are you Elijah? Are you Moses? Mm. That's all I think. You know? Then, okay, let me finish with this jokes. Yeah. Verse 25 and 26. Then they ask him, why are you baptizing if you're neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Mm. Not a prophet. They are saying the prophet. No. They are referring to one person. Yes? Mm. Why are you baptizing? I baptize you with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know. Mm. Now, the problem is, they knew the scriptures that when the Messiah comes, he will baptize them. They knew the scriptures. Mm. Remember Ezekiel 36.25, I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness. Mm. They, they knew about baptism. Mm. Okay, That's why since John was baptizing, He's asking him, are you the Messiah to baptize? No. Mm. Then are you Elijah? Mm. No. Are you the prophet? No. Then why are you baptizing? Mm. They're not asking, what is baptism? Yeah. Remember, they're not asking, what is baptism? They're asking, why are you baptizing? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this mystery that's unfolding here. Okay. I'll go to the other part later. Yeah. Okay, go deeper. Yeah. So this is what the mission of John is already being coming there. John the Baptist mission is being cleared here. Mm. That he says he's not Elijah, but Jesus says he's Elijah. Mm. And already they're referring to the two witnesses, mm. Elijah and Moses. Mm. And they have the new Elijah, John. Why the did uh, uh, just one question? Why did uh, John uh, deny that he was not Elijah? And probably he himself did not know. Who knows? Oh. He is only told to go and proclaim. So he says, I'm the voice. Okay. So he's, he does not know he's Elijah. Mm. But Jesus has confirmed that. Right, right. He's not accepting it. He does not say that. Mm. He only says, I have listened. Anyway, that point, why he says, because he's already received that message. We'll read that when I come there to 33. Okay. I'll tell you that. 33 How would you do that? 33 seems to be, you know, uh, will... Uh, no, no, not very common. It's very simple, Joe. Don't uh, worry. No, okay. It's not as complicated as you think. Okay. It's a very straightforward answer for that. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> it's not okay. a mystery like this Elijah and Moses. Okay. okay. Right. It's a very simple answer. Okay. Only thing we have to search somewhere else in the scripture for that. That's all. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So we'll that we wind up today. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll questions take we'll question. take tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll take, yeah. Yes, yes. So let me say a prayer now quickly. Okay. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the grace to understand the mysteries and depth of your scripture. Every word is speaking into a heart's law. Every word is a life-changing word for us, Lord. Let that word deeply sink into our hearts so that we too may receive life through this eternal word. Because you are the eternal word. As Mother Mary received the word, Give us the grace to receive the word so that we may also, like her, say, let it be done according to thy word. 
Heavenly Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, and the Spirit. Amen. So God bless you, Jose. I will leave now. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Raghu. God bless Thank you, you can, brothers can, and sisters. Can, yeah. Can, <laughs> so we will uh, upload this video on the YouTube. Uh, so if you if you are not if you have not subscribed to the channel, please uh, subscribe. You will have all these talks available. Keep listening to it and uh, we will continue to learn the word of God. God bless you. Have a beautiful evening. Bye-bye.